Joining me for more discussion on Ebola is Jude Moore, a visiting fellow at the Center for Global Development. He previously served as Liberia's Minister of Public Works. Mr. Moore, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. Listen, you were uh, Deputy Chief, Chief of Staff uh, of uh, President Johnson Sirleaf during the Ebola crisis in Liberia. What is your assessment of what is happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo now? So we've seen some of the same things happen that happened with the outbreak in West Africa. So we see the transboundary infections. It started in uh, uh, Guinea and then came into Liberia and uh, Sierra Leone. So we're seeing the same thing coming from the Congo, go into Uganda. I know that Rwanda has also closed the border mm -hmm. and prevented That's students from going to school back and forth because of fear of that happening. So we're seeing some of the same things happen. We're also seeing some of the same distrust of, of government that we saw in Liberia. And so when, when it first started, um, there was this reflexive uh, distrust of the government then people when the government announced that something was happening and these were the measures that needed to be taken people didn't initially um, agree with that mm -hmm. and so we're seeing some of the same things happen except in this case i believe there some of the lessons learned then mm -hmm. are, are being applied so it's, it's in, in terms of the response it's, it's slightly better so uh, you talked about distrust and ebola response uh, really runs on, on trust That's so correct. how do we build trust well and so it, it's hard to build trust after the outbreak, right? I mean, because, and that's why, um, whereas the vaccines are useful, because without the vaccines, the DRC outbreak would have been worse than it is. It is now the second largest after the West African outbreak, yes, but the vaccines have been able to keep it confined within the area and has kept the infection rates down. However, the way to end the outbreak as we did in Liberia and as we did across West Africa was actually changing the behavior of the people. And so in an instance where the people have no confidence in the government or have no trust in the government, that becomes an issue. And that's an issue in the DRC. The part of the DRC where the outbreak occurred, there was no elections allowed in that place because the government used Ebola as a reason to stop the elections from happening. Mm -hmm. That built distrust among the people because they felt that voices were being silenced. Yeah. And so now with the same government coming back to tell them in terms of what they need to do, there is already this tension between the government and the people from that region. Mm -hmm. So the way we did it was there are still people that the local population look up to. So for religious leaders like imams, mm -hmm. um, pastors, um, there were natural leaders and traditional leaders in the community. When we saw so in Liberia, one of the things that happened was Muslims um, do ritual preparation of the body after a person dies. Yeah. And we had the, the, the grand imam come up to say, if something were to happen to me, if I were to die, nobody is to touch my body. My body should not be prepared. And that was a means of communicating to Muslims in the north, in the northwest of the country. So that's the way we build trust, by um, tapping proxies, people they trust, talking through them. Okay. And, and quickly before we wrap up, so what do you see? What more needs to be done very quickly? Well, I think uh, the U.S. needs to step up. I mean, this is something that's missing. We have an international system that, that sort of sees the United States as a center. And one of the things that's been missing here is that the U.S. hasn't actually taken a leadership role in this area. Okay. But I think um, international support to the DRC is going to be useful, too, in terms of getting, getting this under control. Okay, Judy Moore, thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate and it. And that was Judy Moore. He is a visiting fellow at the Center for Global Development.